welcome to Brands Hack, where the first round of the season for the Cartech Road Sports Series, run by the 750 Motor Club, is about to get underway. A field full of 34 cars of all shapes and sizes is about to do battle over 45 minutes around the tight and technical Brands Hatch Indy circuit. Let's head down to the assembly area where Anthony's caught up with Callum Noble. Callum, first time out with a car. I know you've done some testing. Um, Qualifying wasn't as good as you thought it was going to be, but are you looking forward to the race? Yeah, no, it's definitely a new one for me, especially at this length of the race. So, going with an open mind and see how it comes out. It's very warm out there, you got aircon in there? Nope. <laughs> Don't need that. <laughs> so tell us a bit about your background. You've raced in BMWs, but nothing yeah. this powerful. Yeah, production BMWs is where I was at before. That was three seasons of that. They have 140 horsepower as opposed to 300 on this. It was a bit of a step up. It's a little bit heavier, so it's going to drive slightly differently, but yeah, it's home from home. Good luck. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll hand you up to our race commentator, Andy McEwen, for race one. Yes, thank you, Anthony. Here's how the grid lines up then. It's Baljinder Singh and Lucky Kira on row one ahead of the Bidgeway and Chapman Toyota MR2 with Jamie Sturges in his TCR Seat on row number two. As you'll see as the grid files through, I won't bother going through all 34 cars in detail with you, but a lot of them being shared uh, between two different drivers. There'll be a mandatory pit stop for all of the cars during the middle portion of the race. So regardless of whether you need to change driver or not, you have to come in for a specified time. And that specified time is 60 seconds so as to allow now, the cars that are changing drivers to not be at any sort of a disadvantage. But the first thing first, they've got to get through this first sequence of corners unscathed. And with 34 of them about to depart from the brand hatch grid at once, this could get very busy indeed. It's Nord BMW Row 1. It is the uh, M3 of uh, Baljinder Singh on pole position and the one series of Lakfinder Kira alongside. It's a bad start from Singh. The purple car of Singh is going absolutely nowhere, crawling away. And that looks as though maybe it's broken a drive shaft or something off the line because that car just never really accelerated. On board with Callum Noble, he was delayed in that, so he's actually lost even more ground now uh, after what wasn't a brilliant start to the, uh, start to the day anyway with a slightly low qualifying uh, result. So already he's on the back foot. There's the the uh, number 21 car, Josh Johnston, one of several uh, VW Golfs we've got in the field. Back on board with Callum Noble, though, in his BMW M3. Pulls to the right-hand side, got the number 36 car there of Sam McGee and Adam Meelan going up the inside. But it is Lucky Kira that will lead the way then. Leon Bidgeway, I think, uh, is uh, up there into second place in his Toyota MR2. Yes, he is. And on board with uh, Matthew Weymouth in his E36 M3 in third. Right behind him, though, and applying the pressure is Wayne Rothwell uh, in uh, car number 69. That's Vauxhall VX220 on board with Jamie Sturgis. He started fourth, but a lot of rear wheel drive cars around him on the grid got the jump off the line. He's now starting to fight back. He's got past Wayne Rothwell, his next target then in front of him. He's not that far away. He's got side by side for the race lead. The MR2 up the inside there of Lucky Kira. Did Lucky manage to hang on to that? No, they're still side by side. And up the inside line, Leon Bidgeway go for the race lead. Matthew Weymouth in third place has a, a grandstand view of this, but it will be Bidgeway that takes the race lead away. So the Toyota MR2 Turbo heads through into the race lead and will now try and make good its escape on board with uh, Callum Noble. That's the 126 car, Paul Cook, the Toyota MR2, who we've also seen out racing this weekend in the 750 Motor Club uh, Toyota MR2 Championship to uh, decent success in his two races. Oops, and there, speaking of MR2s, there's one rotated up at Druids, and that is car number 45, Dominic Early, who very nearly made an early exit to the race there, but luckily gets it pointing back in uh, vaguely the right direction, albeit right at the tail end of the field. Right, on board with Jamie Sturges, we're into third now, so we are now the car chasing down the leading two, who are side by side again here, with looking Kira going to the outside of Leon Bidgeway uh, into Paddock Hill Bend. Leon defends the inside line. Look, he will now try and get the switch back on the exit of the corner, get back up the inside towards Druids. He can't quite do it, though. Third place, though, as I said, is now Jamie Sturgis. There's no doubt that that Seat Leon has the uh, the speed to run at the front, just didn't get off the line well with it being front-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive cars always get a better launch from a standing start. And Jamie is now in the uh, Seat Leon Eurocup car, having to try and piece his way through. Oh, here comes Lucky Kira, Lucky Kira, looking to the inside of Luke on uh, Bidgeway. And uh, this is, I think, going to be potentially another lead change, is it? Bidgeway tries to hang tough around the outside. Kira, though, I think has got his car in front. Yes, he has. Can Bidgeway come back? him yes he can up the inside sensational racing this you wouldn't believe this was a 45 minute endurance race but there we go Leon Bidgeway and Lucky Kira treating this like a five lap sprint they may 
only last five laps though if we keep on racing like this it's very very close indeed here comes Jamie Sturgis in the Seat make about to make it a three-way party up the inside line he looks on the brakes there's a big hump in the road looking Kira's always going to close the door and so with all of that combined Sturgis decided that discretion was the better part of valor and backed out of that particular manoeuvre really good racing though here in the early stages of the Cartech Road Sports Series race here from Brands Hatch and Leon Bidgeway hanging on to the lead of the race look how close it is though look at Kira in the second position third place for Jamie Sturgis as they drop now down into Graham Hill Bend look at Kira again gets a better exit than Bidgeway looks to the inside line down towards Surtees now he did this a lap ago and then Bidgeway was able to come back at him on this occasion well it looks similar for the time being Kira goes through but does he leave on the gap on the inside line for Bidgeway no, he doesn't, not this time around. So Kira hangs on, but uh, Jamie Sturge is now starting to grow ever larger in their mirrors. Um, Jamie Sturge is a Class A car, Leon Bidgeway a Class B car. That matters little, you'll race with cars uh, in different classes. There are, there are multiple classes, about four or five different classes uh, running in uh, this uh, race this weekend. In fact, Nicky Kira's car runs to an invitational class, which is not eligible to one of the, uh, the usual classes in the series. Important to, point, important to point out though it is a series of races rather than the championship so no points on offer it's just a case of racing for glory and racing for the victory within your class or overall if you can and then we see Dominic Early going a lap down to the race leaders Matthew Weymouth there you notice the front uh, splitter uh, bashing around on the floor he's had a bit of a whack in the front end of that BMW I think in the early stages that's damaged the splitter it will be affecting the aerodynamics of the car but more to the point if it catches the attention of the clerk of the course loose bodywork could see him uh, brought into the pits to get it fixed so we'll have to wait and see whether that happens they were already in amongst the traffic there with 34 cars nearly a 1.3 mile circuit it was never going to take long before they caught the tail end of the field so especially when you consider that uh, there is such a differential in lap times the pole position time was a 53.6 well that was 11 and a half seconds quicker than the slowest lap time set in uh, qualifying so there is quite a difference in pace here between the quick cars and the slow ones and the Ebden and Paul Wells uh, uh, number seven machine there diving around the outside that's the cage of seven three ten r trying to find a way past wayne rodwell the x220 voxel couldn't quite do it they both though now have found their way uh, past matthew weymouth who started to slip backwards now slightly uh, into the clutches of the group of cars behind there is that group of cars behind with the variety of cars we have there lotuses voxel courses all vw golfs oh that's a very sideways moment indeed there for wayne rodwell and that will cost him another place another place gained though by uh, the Andy Ebden and Paul Wells K-Trips so that car really absolutely flying further back we've got Lotus versus Honda Civic and Matthew Weymouth is in the pit lane so Matthew Weymouth becomes the first of our cars to make its pit stop now this can become its mandatory pit stop but I also feel that it's probably uh, in order to try and get that front splitter fixed up they've decided to pit early get the damage fixed and uh, hopefully um, be able to pick up pace throughout the rest of the race so uh, he takes himself out of the equation now one minute pit stop is going to put your lap down you're going to lose a lap by your pit stop so the last thing that you want to happen then is for the safety car to come out and you end up getting trapped a lap down so we'll have to wait and see um, how exactly that uh, works out check back in there with the number 40 car and that's jazz for sapper the white bmw uh, started from the back of the grid uh, with a 10 second penalty now i don't know the details of why that happened presumably some sort of penalty post qualifying maybe a flag infringement or something but uh, either way he starts at the back of the grid and he's already carving his way through quite nicely number 89 there is the uh, the little lotus they mentioned earlier on jeremy adams is uh, dicing away with the uh, the Vauxhall Corsa uh, in front of him. That is uh, James Birch and Chris Morton's car. In the pit lane, as I said, is uh, Matthew Weymouth. And actually, I think it's going to be quite a long pit stop as they try and attach cable tyres to the uh, front splitter of that car to keep it from falling off completely. Josh Johnson there in his uh, number 21 VW Golf, running well inside the top 10. This, briefly, there was the fight for third place down in the pit lane. Drivers are readying themselves. Ah, that's Jasper Sapra, who has got out of his BMW. And there's an issue is the fuel. Ah, yes, look at that the fuel leaking back out of the fuel filler cap. Now, that could be because it's overfilled, but it could also be because of the temperatures. Uh, it is extremely hot here, almost almost boiling the fluids inside the cars. And that could be what's, uh, what's caused that. So, interesting there. We'll wait and see if he's able to get back out. He's re helmeting up his Jasper Sapra. So, hopefully, he be able to make his way back on track 
So down in the pit lane, the conversation's ongoing. There are a couple of cars from further down the order that are pitted. Here are a couple of Toyota MR2s, one of which is Peter Higdon in the number four car, and the other one, car number 30, is Will Powell. Those two cars, and that one indeed as well there, uh, will be out in the MR2 races. That's Josh Brooks, who's been out in uh, racing MR2s this weekend. Another MR2 in, and that's our early spinner, Dominic Early. As he pits, he drives on past the number 77 Rover BRM of uh, Wayne Sterling Parker and Rob Weston Bartholomew. More cars started to make pit stops. One of them choosing to do this fairly early in this 45 minute race, just to get it out of the way. And then they can just go racing for the rest of the encounter. About 50-50 at the moment though. Half the field pitting early, half the field choosing to uh, stay out. Colin Noble though, Callum Noble, excuse me now, turns his way into clearways. Here's this MR2 battle that's going on. And that's uh, Paul Cook dicing away with the six machine there behind. Back into the fray goes the BMW of Matthew Weymouth. Weymouth, even. Back onto the pit straight goes those at that MR2 battle. Callum Noble is in now in this luridly liveried purple and green BMW. Much needed drink of water. The temperature, I can't say enough about the searing air temperatures that we've had here at Brands Hatch, well in excess of 25 degrees. Uh, inside the cockpit, I dread to think what sort of temperatures they're reaching. 66, beg pardon, was uh, the number of the uh, second of these MR2s, uh, which is Chris Thomas. And uh, he's one of the joys, of course, of buying something like a toy air from R2 is that they're eligible to race in lots of different championships. In fact, they're eligible, ed eligible to race in more than one set of races on the 750 Motor Club package. The MR2 has cars have championships themselves, and they're also eligible in this Kartec Road Sports series. And these two getting themselves very close together, and of course, one of the great joys of MR2 racing is how close the racing is. And we now get to translate that into a, a mini endurance uh, setting the line here comes well there's Callum Noble he's back into the fray now just in front of the number 34 car that is the Mazda MX-5 of Dan Rogers flags the clearways because off into the gravel trap has got the number 30 car of Will Powell. James Sturge is about to leave the pit lane. Matt Weymouth has been in again, presumably this time for his mandatory pit stop. Uh, but yellow flags out at uh, Paddock. There's a red light on at the end of the pit lane as well because uh, whilst there is a, I think we might be getting a safety car here or code 60 maybe. Um, Certainly yellow flags now all around the circuit. Yes, the cars are being slowed down behind the safety car. So whilst the safety car's out, you're not allowed to leave the pit lane and you can uh, to, until you're released, until the whole safety car pack's come through. It's a bit of a shame, really, because those that have just pitted, trying to avoid getting stuck in traffic, maybe, they could have gained out of that, but they've actually lost out of it. Look at Kira, though, interestingly, has not yet stopped. So did Jamie Sturgis get help still on the lead lap? did, Jamie will catch right back up to the tail end of the queue, and when Lucky pits, he's going to get back ahead of Lucky, because of course, pitting under the safety car loses you a lot more time, in essence, because the rest of the field are so much closer together. Matt Weymouth, though, and several others, in fact, ah, no, Jamie Sturgis is here. So Sturgis has only now uh, been released from the pit lane. That could be costly for the hopes of uh, a race victory for him. Now, you'd imagine that Lucky Kira will pit this time around. I'd be surprised if he doesn't. How many laps did Sturgis lose? Hopefully he only lost the one. I think he will have only lost the one. And he should be able to get that lap back when Lucky Kira pits. But if Lucky pits on the safety car, well, this, I don't know. This will be interesting, this, to see how this all uh, fit, works out. It's the most frustrating thing in the world when the... Uh, safety car is called for midway through a uh, pit lane cycle, but yet yeah, they're all coming in. Callum Noble's in as well, on board with him as he winds his way down into the pit lane. And there were several cars already down there. Right, the safety car is coming in. It is not the race leader, I don't think, that's behind him. I'm fairly sure that Jamie Sturgis um, is the leader of the race. Ahead of Wayne Rothwell in second place, I think. And Neil Bidgeway might be third, but we'll try and pick that out as the cars accelerate to the line. You can't overtake until you cross the start finish line, though, which is a bit of a frustration for some of those stuck behind that markers. They can 
now step on it on the run towards Paddock Hill Bend. Oh, no, there's a car off again now into Paddock Hill Bend. That's the MR2 that was actually at the front of the safety car queue and ironically might have now caused uh, reason for another safety car. Car 15, I think that was, wasn't it? Yeah, that's the Gavin Aldworth and Jonathan Gomm uh, car. Um, oh dear, well that's that's not the way to restart your race, but of course the tyres will have gone cold uh, as a result of all of that time spent going slowly behind the safety car, and that's a real shame. Right, this is the battle for the lead then, Jamie Sturgis in the Seat, and that car, number 69, the VX220 Vauxhall of uh, Wayne Rothwell, they are your top two runners at the moment, and then it's quite a gap back to everybody else from third on backwards, but based on the pace that Sturgis had in the first part of the race, you would be hard pressed to find anyone more capable than him now, more likely than him to win the race. Or car off on the grass there to the right hand side of Surtees we saw. Oh, it's Lucky Kira. Lucky Kira, our early race leader, is now off the road. So Jamie Sturgis will definitely have an uncontested race lead now. What on earth has happened there? Well, there are now cars littering the side of the road again. I worry whether we might need another safety car period towards the last few laps of this second race of the year and Seat looking fine sounds good and it very rarely misses a beat this car Jamie himself a very solid and dependable driver doesn't make many mistakes of course I'm, I'm I'm building this all up now for something to go wrong but I hope it doesn't Jamie Sturgis in the uh, Rammer liveried car put on a bit of a clinic in this race really and never after the pit stops at least never looked like being headed back on board with the man himself now look at this uh, group of back markers in front there just what you want to see out of your windshield when you're uh, approaching the final stages of an endurance race oh good i'm going to pass more slower cars any one of these back markers could have a lapse of concentration take you out battling each other and that can lead to contact or just you having to take to the grass sometimes to find a way past them but uh, he negotiates that little group of mostly MR2s I believe it was Peter Higton the last of those to go another lap down and he negotiates them safely so Sturgis is now only a couple of laps away from taking a victory here at Brands Hatch head now back out of Druids, whoops, Paul Cook and uh, Peter Higton there side by side, that was proper rec recreating a uh, Toyota MR2 race there. And Sturgis there as he makes his way uh, down towards Surtees once again, got a Renault clear now and a Vauxhall course to negotiate, there's always something on the horizon in the road sports race. race at Donington Park last time out um, Jamie Sturgis I don't believe took part in that so he's looking for his first win um, of the season here in this particular series he's already won races though across other championships and other series around the country and this car of course one of the newest cars on the grid it's also one of the few cars on the grid that is a purpose-built racing car an awful lot of the other cars in Cartech Road Sport series are production based cars that have been turned into racing cars, which obviously is the cheap way of doing it, but that is a purpose built Seat Leon Euro Cup car. And, uh, it's a proper bit of kit, that, not cheap either, um, but I'm sure he'll be getting some help from the Seat parts department whenever something needs replacing or working on. We're only too happy to help. Paul Cook makes his way back onto the pit straight. He's got the better of Peter Higton now in their private little battle that was going on. Uh, that was for position, incidentally, and it was for an important one because it was for 10th place. So the last position within the top 10 now belongs to Paul Cook in the yellow and grey Toyota MR2. Our second place man, Wayne Rothwell there, tried to get up the inside of him. Oh, Cook's Cook out of shape there. Well, Rothwell tried to get up the inside and Cook at the last second saw him coming and that last little twitch of the steering wheel unsettled the back of Paul Cook's car and very nearly sent him into the gravel trap very late in the running. That would have been embarrassing. There is the number 92 Peugeot, the Abbott Peugeot continuing on its way. It's been locked in combat for much of the uh, second half of the race, hasn't it, with the Civic behind. Um, 
but uh, the Civic just can't quite find a way through. That Civic being number um, 91, which is the Robert Harrison and Jordan Fox example. But they just can't find a way past Dan Abbott in the Peugeot 306 rally. Back out of panic, the nav is split by one of the Mazda MX-5s this time around, so uh, no chance for the Fox and Harrison machine to make a move through just yet. That's that uh, number 34 Mazda MX-5 of Dan Rogers that's been involved in some terrific battles with lots of MR2s over the course of uh, 45 minutes, which are drawing towards a conclusion now. I believe we might get one more lap out of this race, possibly, because I saw Jamie Sturgis, yeah, he's there in the background. He may see the checkered flag this time. I would imagine Possibly it will be next time round that they get it. Let's wait and see. Yes, I think, I think they're going to get one more lap out of it looking at the time. So Sturgis will have to probably overtake these three cars in front, all of whom are having a titanic battle. And he'll be just hoping against hope that they don't uh, get themselves together. Towards Paddock, he gets past two of them. Now it's just the Dan Abbott machine in front, number 92, that he needs to try and uh, find a way past. And Dan wide on the way in towards Druid, tight on the way out, he's got the better I think of the two cars behind, that was again a fight for position between he, Dan Rob Rogers and the Ron Harrison and Jordan Fox Civic. Further back, ah, Leon Bidgeway, Leon Bidgeway is ahead of the Ebden and Wells Caterham, so third place does now belong to Leon Bidgeway, we didn't see where that happened, I don't think he's quite got time to catch Wayne Rothwell, in fact no he hasn't, Wayne's got still about a five second lead over Bidgeway in a third will get himself onto the podium. There's no doubt about the race winner though. Jamie Sturges is coming out of the final corner and does he see the chequered flag this time through? He does not actually, so this is going to be another lap, beg your pardon. And he uh, will have to negotiate another lap of the Brands Hatch Indy circuit and therefore have to negotiate another couple of back markers. Next up is the Ben Abbott and Jack Mitchell last MX5 I believe and then the Lotus uh, up the road. Uh, of Jeremy Adams, which is on for a seventh place finish as we speak. So Jeremy Adams having a really good run in that uh, Lotus Elise. This fight for third, therefore, gets another lap to run. And in traffic, can the Ebden and Wells machine find a way back through? Closing in ever further on Leon Bidgeway as they go through Druids. Back down in towards Graham Hill. There's Wayne Rothwell. He comes out of the left hander down the Cooper Strait. And continues on his way. Now this time, I do anticipate that Sturgis might just see the chequered flag. I've been wrong, wrong once already there. Let's see. Jamie Sturgis up towards the start finish line. And no, there is the chequered flag. He is victorious in race number two of the season for the Cartech Road Sport Series and a dominant victory in the end as well by 11 seconds over Wayne Rothwell in second, Leon Bidgeway third, then Ebden and Wells fourth ahead of Josh Johnson fifth, then it's Birch and Morton in the course of sixth, Jeremy Adams seventh ahead of Dan Rogers, Harrison Fox ninth and Paul Cook rounds out the top ten, then to Peter Higdon, Josh Brooks, Locke and Gerrard are thirteenth, Abbott and Mitchell are fourteenth and Edward Christie rounds out the top fifteen. It was a race of attrition though, we lost Callum Noble late on as well, Chris Thomas, Dominic Early, Matthew Smith, Lucky Kira we saw pull off having led, Roy Davis, Matt Weymouth, the Oldworth and Lewis Toyota MR2, as well as Will Powell's version, didn't make the finish, nor did Jasper Sapra. Baljinder Singh, whilst Abbott and MacDonald and Dan Abbott's Persia were both excluded post-race for being underweight. Jamie, what a hectic race, coming away with a win. Yeah. Um, but tell us about what happened at the start. Um, well, I was, I was sort of sitting in fourth and a few cars managed to jump me. Um, yeah, lost, a, lost a bit of time with a bit of wheel spin and then, uh, yeah, so the first lap is always a complete melee. And um, then managed to just pick off a couple of cars and then sort of settle down and, you know, just pick them off one at a time. And then I got to uh, uh, the back of the BMW, Lucky's car, and I've, I've raced with him a lot and I know what, it, I know what he's like. And, uh, so I thought I'll just I'll just keep pushing, try and stay with him, and then perhaps I can you know, I can get him in the pit stops, or I can get him to make a mistake or something. And uh, but he wasn't doing it; he was driving really, really well. Wayne, not the most powerful car out there, the Vauxhall VX220, but it's great around the corners. And congratulations on the second place. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it is. It's um, like you say, it's a really good handling car. Um, and I was surprised to get second place. I didn't know where I'd finished. Didn't have a clue. Well, unfortunately, that brings an end to the racing here at Brands Hatch. What a fantastic weekend it's been with the 750 Motor Club. If you want to see some more action, please tune in next time.